up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Painting out your new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube, even in the rain. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan, courtesy of Hanover Volkswagen in Hanover, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because there is new standard safety for the 2024 model year. Not only that, you do get two years or 20,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. I always like to mention that. As far as the warranty goes, it is above average. It comes in at four years or 50,000 miles. So that is definitely nice as well. Definitely better than the traditional three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. But ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Tiguan. First one being the S trim level. That is the one we actually that we have today. That one starts at $28,505 SE for $31,205. SER line black for $34,205. And lastly, the SEL R line for $38,505. And so for all of those trim levels, but that last one, front wheel drive comes standard. The last trim level does come standard with all wheel drive, but you can add all wheel drive to those first three trims. If you wanted to do that, simply add $1,500 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Tiguan is going to be the same. Powering this beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 184 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 221 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,600 RPM, power being sent to the front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic. Zero to 60 time according to car and driver puts it at approximately 9.1 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 30 on the highway for the front wheel drive at least, 22 city, 29 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our Tiguan, wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes. So there's a little circular dial located directly behind the shifter and there's two ways to adjust the drive modes. So the mode button in the middle, if you press that in, you can actually choose between the on-road drive modes. On-road drive modes are going to include normal, eco, sport, and custom. And then if you turn the dial to the left and to the right, that gives you the off-road drive modes. And those off-road drive modes will be like snow and off-road and things like that. So ultimately adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and the all-wheel drive system engagement as well. So now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and put this thing to the test as the rain picks up here. And let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Tiguan here up to speed in this downpouring rain. All right, we got into sport driving right here and pulling onto the road in three, two, one, grip please. Not bad, and it did grip. Ah, that actually feels a heck of a lot quicker than zero to 60 and 9.1 if I'm being quite honest. Car driver, I think you're slack and you got a new guy up behind the wheel or something because that wasn't that bad. You're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. I know it annoys people when I say that, but I'm being honest, like that is plenty of an acceleration, especially in that sport driving mode. So make sure you put it in sport driving mode to really get the best when you're merging and all that. But yeah, that's plenty of an acceleration. Not gonna have any issues there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that comes in at 126 feet, which is pretty much par for the course. A lot of SUVs will give you the 130s. Uh, mid 120s is pretty much average. And then the one teens is like sports and in good. So essentially what I'm saying is this is right where it should be when it comes to SUVs. As far as braking feel goes, let's go ahead and hit the brakes. It's a little bit on the softer side, but it's not bad. It's to be, it's what I would expect the Tiguan to brake like if I could talk today. But yeah, that braking feel is not bad whatsoever. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, that's been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today. And this is probably the worst road that I typically test drive. Let's see, uh, let's see how it handles this here, so. I mean, you can't feel some of the road, of course, because this road is horrendous, but it's a heck of a lot better than the Civic I remember driving on this road, I will say that. Not that that's really saying much, but anyways, ride quality will get the job done. I guess I'll just put it that way. As far as steering feel goes, I will say I love the thickness of the steering wheel. It's a little thicker than you traditionally find in SUVs, and I like that. So well done Volkswagen for that. As far as steering feel goes, back to that again. 
it's it's average. It might be a little bit on the heavier side of things, but it's what you would expect the steering feel to actually feel like in the Tiguan. Then touching on cab noise, I, I'm just getting a lot of rain noise, really. There's a heck of a lot of wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin, so that's been perfectly fine as well. Then touching on visibility, looking at my rear view mirror there, I can actually see perfectly fine out the back, and that rear window wiper, I think, is on automatic mode because uh, that is definitely going right now. And speaking of, Rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on every single trim level across the board. I want to emphasize that because that is not the case for most manufacturers out there. Usually it does come standard, you get it in the upper trim level. So for Volkswagen with the Tiguan, every single trim level, even our S trim level that we have today, it's got automatic front windshield wipers and the automatic rear wiper as well. So that's pretty cool. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Volkswagen Tiguan finished in white. Yes, Volkswagen got creative with that exterior color name for sure. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number three, indicating that the new Tiguan is built and assembled in Mexico, believe it or not. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front. LED headlights do come standard on every single trim level across the board. They look dang good up there. I like the design to them. With LED daytime running lights, you get the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, headlights are going to turn on automatically for you. So one less thing you gotta worry about there, but you also get automatic high beams and that is a new change for the 2024 model year actually. So they are newly standard. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so absolutely love that feature you will find a silver front grille for the s and se trim levels that of course is what you guys are looking at right now but then a black front grille for the ser line black and then an led front grille for the sel r line it's where that led light bar kind of goes right through the volkswagen logo in the middle there so that looks pretty darn good. I've seen that on the Atlas before. I reviewed that on the Atlas. I thought it looked amazing, but you will get some added chrome accents found in the bottom corners if you go with the SEL R line as well. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the Tiguan, all the way to the top, you will find roof rails. They do come standard for every trim level across the board. They will vary whether it be in silver or black. So it depends on the trim level that you go with there. Rear privacy glass does come standard across the board as well. You will find some front fender accents. Of course, they kind of carry on to the front doors as well, but they look good up there. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated and then power folding if you go with the SEL R-Line trim level only. So otherwise you're not gonna get that power folding feature, but it does look like they have LED integrated turret signals as well. So I like that. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. 17 inch alloys coming with the S. That's what you guys are looking at. 18 inch alloys for the SE, 19 inch gloss black alloys for the SE R-Line black and lastly 20 inch alloys for the sel r line but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you guys can probably see there is a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper of course there are led taillights that do come standard for all trim levels across the board for added illumination at night i absolutely love that you do have like and subscribe lettering found just under the volkswagen logo and down here as well i'm just kidding of course but the four motion is actually the all-wheel drive badging that means that this particular s trim level does have the all-wheel drive but I have been reviewing cars for around nine years now, so if you are into new car reviews, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. I would definitely appreciate it. And then just below it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet kind of tucked away underneath on the passenger side there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Tiguan, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be hands-free power tailgate for the SEL R-Line. However, a power tailgate is optional on all the other trims, but otherwise it is gonna be a manual tailgate. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 12 cubic feet behind that third row. Yes, a third row is available for the Tiguan. I wanted to mention that, 
Most don't come with it, but it is available. So I'll say that, but 33 cubic feet behind the second row. And then with all rows folded, 65.3 cubic feet if you were to go with the three row configuration or 73.4 cubic feet if you were to go with the two row configuration behind that first row. So substantially more for the two row configuration. And not only that, there isn't gonna be a heck of a lot of space in that third row as far as legroom goes. So it's almost better you just go with the two row in my opinion. If you want a bigger SUV, hit up the Atlas. But anyways, I'll get to the legroom in a second, but in that cargo area, you will find super bright LED cargo lighting. Some of the brightest LED cargo lighting I've ever seen. There's a cargo cover back there, grocery bag hooks. There's some storage in the back corners, of course, 12 volt power outlet. And then if you were to lift up underneath of the cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire underneath of there. But now let's go ahead and get to that rear legroom, 27.9 inches for that third row. So for reference, my old Ford Mustang GT, had 29 inches. I could not fit at all. I don't think kids could even fit in 29 inches. So 27 inches, which is less than my two-door coupe Mustang, it's not going to happen basically. But anyways, in the second row, it's actually really good. 38.7 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. There is rear ventilation that does come standard. You're going to find the 12 volt power outlet for the SE trim leveling up. And there is also rear center armrest with cup holders that actually does come standard as well. So now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seating does come with our S trim level that we have here. Eight way power driver seat with four way power lumbar for the SE trim level and up. Leatherette seating for the SE trim level and up. Heated front seats for all trim levels, go figure. Ventilated front seats then for the SEL R line trim level overall. Seating was fine, not anything crazy. There are horizontal seams, but it'll certainly get the job done. I personally didn't have any issues there, but then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is leatherette wrapped for the S and SE trims. Now, that is new for the S trim level for 2024. So I wanted to emphasize that because last year for 2023, that was wrapped in urethane, but now it is wrapped in leatherette as you guys can see. But anyways, leather wrapped for the R-line trims and it does have a flat bottom as well then. But so then make your way up to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. It is a pretty basic key. You got your Volkswagen logo on the one side, lock and unlock of course, but it is all keyless enter with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button. And so once started up, eight inch digital gauge cluster comes standard for all trim levels, but the SEL, that SEL is gonna give you a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster. But either way, these gauges are dang good. The 10 and a quarter inch is really good, but the eight inch, is pretty darn good as well. You can change the color, you can change the loadout. Like I've said in previous reviews, a lot of times the manufacturers will put digital gauges, but they're not customizable, which doesn't make sense to me because it's essentially just software updates that can allow you to completely adjust what is on there. So Volkswagen did a pretty darn good job with their gauge clusters and uh, they are pretty customizable. Of course, it gives you things like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, uh, digital speedometer and so on. So gauges are absolutely great. So no issues there. Then make your way to overall interior quality, panoramic sunroof coming standard on the R-line trim levels, auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls that is also frameless is available. We don't have it, but it is available. Overhead sunglass holder does come standard. You do get 15 colors of ambient lighting for the R-line trim levels. Dual zone climate control coming standard. Wireless phone charger for the SE trim level and up. You're gonna find some illuminated door sills for those R-line trim levels at least. 12 volt power outlet found in front of the shifter there. You got a couple phone charging ports and uh, some rubberized storage if you don't go with the wireless phone charger. Um, so we don't have the SE obviously. So we got the rubberized storage. Dual cup holders behind the shifter and a decent amount of storage within the center armrest there. So then now making our way to the infotainment screen here, you're gonna find a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display for the S, eight inch color touchscreen display for the SE trim level and up, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, of course, but wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay with the eight inch screen only. So we don't have it today, but factory navigation system coming on the SEL trim level. And of course you can check out your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, you're gonna find six speakers for all trim levels, but the SEL, because that SEL is going to give you a nine speaker Fender sound system. So. Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. So All right, this is actually not bad. I didn't mind that sound system. That way, I mean, I know we have the S trim level gear with us here today, but 
that was actually decent for a bass sound system. There was plenty of bass. Clarity was pretty good as well, so I personally don't have any issues there. And so the last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least, is when you do put the Tiguan in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so the Tiguan does a great job with safety. Let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So it doesn't get better than that. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. But here is the big change for 2024. Newly standard safety for all trim levels for 2024. Because previously, all this safety was only on the SE trim level and up. But it is now standard on the S trim level that we have today as well. And that's going to be Volkswagen's IQ Drive driver assistance system. That includes adaptive cruise control with lane centering. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking. Pedestrian monitoring, travel assist, lane assist, and emergency assist as well so you gotta love that so overall when it comes to my final thoughts i personally think this is an excellent design i said that from the get-go when they first came out with this new design i think it looks really really darn good especially in this service bay lighting that we had with us here today also excellent safety you can't beat an ihs top safety pick plus if you got kids you're safe in this one Digital gauges are absolutely amazing as well. I love the customization to them. Both gauge clusters look absolutely amazing. The only constructive criticism that I personally can think of, because I try to think of myself in the position of being a buyer in every single one of these cars that I review, would be the reliability. So if you take a look at consumer reports, it does give it a below average reliability rating. So if you favor reliability, Maybe this isn't the one for you, but at the same time, it is a very safe SUV. It's very good looking and all of the things I just mentioned, basically. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Tiguan in the comment section below. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're new new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.